Welcome, my achievers, to your East Achievers Game Podcast for the week of December 1st. Already, end of the year. Happy to be here with, of course, the one, the only video game utopia's only, Emma Watkins Jr. Hello, hello. I love the welcome, ma. <laughs> <laughs> I wake up, I had a, this was filled with coffee at one point. It is now oh. empty. So I'm pretty lit up right now, if I'm being honest with you. Oh, boy. I hate whenever I say great googly moogly, because then all my devices turn on. <laughs> Do you have, like, a, is that, like, your keyword? No, because I said the word Google. <laughs> and then my phone's like, like what But you, like, barely said Google. Like, you said googly. Oh, it's enough to trigger it. Trust wow. Me. Okay. We got some sensitive software over there at Emmy Watkins Jr.'s house. So anyways, thank you so much for joining us. Remember, we just did a God of War spoiler cast. Go check that out. I actually am very happy with it. It's, it was very, uh, a very good discussion, I think, about the game. Did it come across as a little fanboy about the franchise? Maybe. That's up to you to decide. But I very much enjoyed it, and my co-host did as well. So go listen to us. Break down the storytelling, characters, etc. Uh, let's do some other light housekeeping. First off, thank you again for joining us. Remember, every Friday we come to you in your ears, and we sound nice. And we come to your ears. Yeah, you know, we come to your ears. You sound nice. You go to a podcast <laughs> service or YouTube video. You like, you comment, you subscribe, and then you listen to us every single week. And thank you so much for joining us, as our numbers have been doing very good. So I thank all the new listeners, and of course, Emmett Watkins Jr., a regular in this chair. You can go check all his stuff out. Of course, Spoonful Vids, VGU, oh, yeah. all these things. Anything else I'm missing? Uh, welcome to the thing also. Of course. With T.L. Foster and Jarrett Green. Yes. Another great show. Still haven't checked yeah. that out. I need to. I listen to your Spoonfuls. I ah. listen to the VGUs. I still need to check out the other one. Highly recommend. There's an episode we did. I think it's the last episode or the one before it uh, where we had Ty Gallitz Row on. Mm. Best episode we've done. Ooh. I love that episode. So yeah, I'm excited. So I'm excited about that. You start there, let it trickle down. Yeah. Excited about that. We had Odell Armour Jr. on and one of our latest shows. He's a great guy. He went to oh. Spain recently, uh, which was awesome to see him there. He's having fun and he's a very, very insightful Nintendo centric listen. So remember to go check that episode out as well. Shout out to Odell. Good one. Fucking nice ass guy, too. He was so nice. Oh, yeah. I will say the fastest guy that has ever messaged me back. Took a second. Literally. <laughs> Never happened before. Let's get into the show. I've taken five minutes before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and literally, I sent it. Yeah. I got a reply, and I went, what was that? And I went back, and he was like, yeah, let's do it. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Anyways, let's get into the show. Not so rapid fire. Street Fighter will have a closed beta test between December 16th to the 19th. This is, of course, the second time. Um, if you have, if you were in the first one, you are automatically invited to the second one. And if you'd like to sign up this time, it is the same as last time. It is a lottery system. You have to have a Capcom ID linked to your platform of choice, and then you will get picked out, I assume, and then be sent an email. Um, I'm hoping to get this. I don't think it'll happen, but I do want to try the game because it does look very good. Yeah. It does look very fun. I'm even I'm interested, and in, I never play any fighting game really. So. Yeah, same here. I really only play Mortal Kombat and Injustice. Really, it's really the only ones I really play. And this is the first time I've seen a Street Fighter and been like, I really actually want to touch, like, get on the controller and touch this game. Essentially, I feel that. An Assassin's Creed Valhalla update is launching called Shared History, which will set up Assassin's Creed Mirage and will include a Last Chapter DLC, which will show the end of Ivor's story. Sticking with Assassin's Creed, a collaboration was leaked, then quickly announced that both Assassin's Creed and Destiny 2 will be getting cosmetic items and weapons modeled after the other franchise. So you'll be getting Destiny 2 things in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and you'll be getting Assassin's Creed Valhalla things in Destiny 2. Assumably, both things may be costing money, maybe not. I assume they will. I don't know. Uh, maybe there'll be a pack you buy for Assassin's Creed. Destiny for sure is selling you cosmetics, so we'll have to see how that comes out. And this update will be coming December 6th for Assassin's Creed specifically. I think it's unclear when the Destiny collaboration as of recording is happening. I, I would say probably the same day or at least that Tuesday, which is the, the 6th is the Tuesday, right? It will that actually... Six, yeah. <coughs> excuse me. That will probably actually both happen at the same time as Destiny 2 will have a new season on December 6th as well. So all of this will probably happen at once. 
Makes sense. David Cage had an interview with IG in Japan. Go check it out as it wasn't very newsworthy, but it gives you a small glyph into his thought process around making a Star Wars title. And remarks about being purchased by NetEase and working with other Japanese studios. I actually read the whole thing. I didn't find anything really to report on. He just kind of talks about Eclipse. He talks about getting purchased and other things. Uh, kudos to IG Japan to interviewing him. But again, I, I didn't find it really newsworthy. Were you able to check this uh, out? Didn't know this interview existed until right now. It's a very um, short interview, too. It's not it, not really. I mean, I, I think it's clear that he, I, I'll be honest, I don't know why he was interviewed because it's clear he can't really talk about much. He just talked about Star yeah. Wars Eclipse in a very open sense, not really detailing many things. He spoke about the Japanese culture kind of favoring storytelling recently. And that's a, I mean, again, like I read the whole thing and I couldn't find a single thing to really report on. So I just kind of left it out to just. Achievers at home can go listen. Yeah. It is telling that this interview, I don't know if this is David Cage telling people, hey, I'm open for an interview, or if this is someone at IGN Japan being like, hey, let's interview David Cage. Maybe. But it is, it's interesting that he's getting an interview from IGN Japan and not any of the European sectors or the American sector, nope. because I'm sure that would probably not fly. Um, but hey, I, I'm still interested to see. I don't think I'm going to play it because I'm not interested in Star Wars like that anymore. But uh, Eclipse, I want to see what that game ends up being and when it ends up coming out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that's almost probably the most intriguing thing about the game is when it will come out. And I still think, I don't even think they've still gone out of pre-pro, although I, of course, don't know that. I, ju I just highly doubt because that game was in pretty bad shape a couple months ago. And that's not something you just yeah. fix like on a dime. We'll see. Yeah. 2047 let's go <laughs> uh this is gonna be an interesting one uh we didn't have a lot of news stories so i just want to ask emmett um more of a question and, and not really a question but more of like a thought process of like what's his time in the remaining years gonna be like so i have written down unexpected gaming avalanche is coming what are you going to be playing? So unexpected, of course, to me, probably no one else. But I don't know. I feel like I blinked and we're about to get seven, eight games coming out in the next two week period. It feels like almost. Yeah. What is the rest of the year look like for you in terms of new releases uh, or uh, sorry, unreleased things? I, I know I find myself very excited for tomorrow, actually, because I was very hesitant on Midnight Suns. But the reviews seem favorable enough and they said the right amount of things to really get me going so i think i'll be getting that game as well as of course callisto protocol the same day what's the rest of the year look like in terms of unreleased games uh callisto protocol is definitely one i'm very 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 mm -hmm. interested in um i'm not sure if i'm going to pick it up at launch yet just mm -hmm. because not for any quality reasons but i have so many games i need to catch up on from earlier in the year yeah. that i don't know if i'm buying any of these games uh that come out you know from now until the end uh, Midnight Suns, I will say I am interested in it more because um, the gameplay I was always concerned about, but people are making enough, uh, not Risk of Rain, what's the other one? Oh, Slay the Spire. Slay the Spire. Making, yeah. IGN, um, IGN Review. Oh my God, I'm blanking on the game name. Uh, uh, sorry. Oh, the reviewer. Uh, the, the review, I, I don't remember. I think it was um, Stan, Stan Hope or something. I, I, oh, I, Dan. Dan Stapleton. Thank yeah, you so much. Dan Stapleton, that's it. Um, I believe he reviewed it. Uh, he said Slay the Spire in the comment, and I went, he said the word. I tweeted about it even. I was like, he said it. That's all I need. That's yeah. all. You say the word. Slay the Spire. It's done. I'm getting it. It's over oh. now. <laughs> I did see a lot of praise saying, uh, very highlighting, like, very Persona 5 Royal. And even in the coverage of the game, I was like, I don't think we should say that. But it looks yeah. like it is at least hearkening to uh, that type of interaction with your teammates i'll say mm -hmm. yeah i i do want to play midnight suns at some point but because it is because here's the thing i've heard that it is a persona like game i think people are more impressed that we have a persona like that isn't persona for yeah. the first time i don't want to say ever but for the first time in a long time at least i think people are more impressed in that and i don't think people from are, an american studio heard, too yeah from american studio but i don't think I've heard a lot about the story of Midnight Suns not being great, a lot of characters being kind of flat. 
And I think the fact that we got a game like this in the Marvel branding is more exciting than what the actual story and characters are, oh, possibly. I can't find so myself I'm, giving two fucks about anything that's happening around it. I'm like, as long as I can play the game, I don't care. But like the story, I'm like, yeah, I don't really like, seem. I, I feel like I don't care. But whatever it yeah, is that's nothing happening about the story, I care about. But if you if half the game is talking to people and building relationships, I don't know if I'm going to care about that. So, right. I'm not as, you know, revved up on that one. I will say High on Life comes out on December 12th. Uh, that's a Game Pass joint, so I will I will be playing that. I am very excited for that one. I like I like some of the Smosh games. I haven't played all of them. Is it, is it Smosh? Squanch. That's what it is. Smosh yeah. is a uh, YouTube <laughs> company. <Yep. laughs> uh, the, the weird S words. Um, but yeah, uh, Squanch games, I, I really like, Tro not Trover, what's the other one? Accounting uh, Plus. Accounting Plus, yeah. Plus. Yeah. Yeah, I played that a long time ago, and that's really the only game I played from them. But uh, now you got a first person shooter. I love a good first person shooter with different abilities, really weird alien worlds, grappling hooks. Seems like a game pretty much made for me, so I'm going to play that. Mm. Um, and is there anything else coming out in December? Um, Let's go to releases.com. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say that. I was just about to go to releases.com as well. I, I, you've, you've hit the big ones, um, I'll say, uh, with Midnight Suns, Ooh. Callisto, and. Need for Speed. Need for Speed Unbound. I yes. Bring that up. Technically um, out tomorrow I, as well. I think. Yeah. I mean, it's been out in early access for a minute now, but I've uh, actually played it too. Ooh. Okay. Fancy schmancy. Yeah. I want to get my hands on that one. It looks like, um, from what I'm hearing, it's not Burnout, so I'm not gonna love this game to that degree. No. But it looks good enough. It looks mm. fun. It looks like it looks lively. Like a lot of these racing games are very flat in a way where I'm like, uh, I really don't care about, I don't want to play your Grand Prix 32 or even like Forza Horizon. It's fun, but it's very sterile, you know? Ah. It's very, it, it feels like a product more than it feels like a game. Right. Um, and yeah, I, I feel like Need for Speed Unbound with the little anime art style and the ASAP Rocky, you know, fresh out of fatherhood. <laughs> um, well, I, I might be able to mess with that. I don't know if I'm going to buy it at launch once again, but it looks interesting enough to get me interested. So here we are. We'll see about it. Yes, we'll see about that. Moving on, God of War Ragnarok, posted on by uh, PlayStation. 5.1 million copies sold throughout its debut week. Fastest selling first party launch from PlayStation. And it's also a God of War franchise record. Breaking records over there. Um, we'll talk about another game that's breaking records. So that makes this look like pennies, but... <laughs> Very happy for everyone at PlayStation and, of course, Sony Santa Monica. Enjoy the bonuses. Yeah, that's what you get when you make a really high polished game that is universally loved in every single way. Agreed. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet sold record breaking numbers regardless of how the title is performing technically, and Nintendo did make a response stating, quote, We apologize for the inconvenience and we take player feedback seriously. Oh. This was reported to be answered in between laps of their Scrooge McDuck-like money pit that they made with all the profits of Scarlet and Violet sales. I find uh, this uh, statement hilarious. They could have said a bit more. They literally said a sentence uh, in a mm -hmm. update patch that, ah, we'll fix it. I'm like, all right, you could have said a lot okay. more, um, <laughs> especially when your game sold uh, a billion copies. So I, I don't quite understand that. I'm right there with you. This whole thing. The apologize for the inconvenience is so like, sorry, you're mad. <laughs> Look, we didn't do anything wrong. I will say exactly. Nintendo was very interestingly taking the fall for that as Pokemon Company uh, Game Freak made the game. So mm -hmm. very interesting that they said we apologize for the inconvenience. You think Game Freak would come out and say something? Yeah, I mean, hey, they're the publishers, so, you know. It comes down to them in a certain degree, but... Oh, yeah, yeah no, everyone involved should say something about this. <laughs> I, I have played uh, a, quite a bit. We'll get into um, that and what we've been playing, but, yeah, I played quite a bit, and I'm like, we could have said more. <laughs> There's a lot of problems with the game. Yeah, it's definitely... Bleh. <laughs> I see that from far away, and I'm like, man, Switch is having a rough one, huh? <laughs> yeah, we need a new Switch. Yeah. I... As the achievers know, I grab articles and I don't always fully cover them uh, as in my own reporting as sometimes it feels like I would just be reporting what they, they just said in their articles. So sometimes I just direct you to that said article. Over on IGN, Rebecca Valentine reports, Just Cause Studio employees call for change amid year-long battle over controversial hire. Now, this is very deep and honestly, I didn't see 
a lot of reasons uh, to fully cover this specifically. Uh, I'll quickly give you like the cliff notes of um, they hired this guy, seemingly had a lot of misconduct uh, reported on, and they pretty much kind of evaded like all the questions about like how bad he was. HR seemed to evade it as well, and they just kind of overlooked it for pretty much a year, and they finally caved after everyone was like, pretty much like either fix it or something more catastrophic will happen. Seems like it's fixed. I want everyone to go read this article as it's both very good. And it tells you a clear story of what was going on. And honestly, didn't know this was even happening. Maybe I reported on this and forgot about it. I don't know. But I had no idea any of this was going on. Did you, uh, Emmett? Or have any insight uh, on this reporting? Um, I didn't know this thing was going on. I understand that if if the fact that this person got hired made news at all when they got hired, then I doubt you would see a year long battle internally of, you know, push back and forth between individuals. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think this was news at any point until now, but I will say, you know, this is a, this is Rebecca Valentine, right? I yes. So. Rebecca Valentine. Yes. Yeah. Cause I, I love her reporting. She, she is the rare type of person. Cause you got a handful of people in games journalism who are telling interesting stories, but also important stories. Like for every article, like I remember she did that one story uh, a little while back where there was a whole like third person action adventure plays versus zombies game that got yep. canceled. That was a great, um, great read. Yeah, that was a great, that was a great read. And I really, you know, appreciate those stories. But then you get stories like this where it's talking about, you know, this isn't even a case of like, because we hear plenty of stories about like, oh, all the bad things going on internally at Activision or all the bad things going on internally at uh, at Ubisoft. We hear a lot of that stuff. This is such a specific thing that isn't even like, oh, my God, there's horrible things going. It's just another example of like, even when there's a bad thing that everyone understands is a bad thing, getting that change to happen can be such an uphill battle for no apparent reason. Um, and so I, I really appreciate stories like this because this shows like, Oh, it's not just, oh, when someone's doing something like clearly illegal or clearly awful, even when it's something like, you know, oh, this guy is literally it's just one person is a problem. Even that happening and getting them out of here can be a very difficult battle. So, um, yeah, I appreciate the article. I need to read it myself. I hadn't seen it all yet, but um yeah, hopefully the folks over at Avalanche, hopefully that's not why fucking contraband is out yet. <laughs> but um, but yeah, hopefully they're doing better now, now that they're out there and uh, hopefully we're able to, you know, have a more easy work experience. Well said. I ask my co-host every week a single question. Of course, that is Emmett. What have you been playing? I've been playing... You know what? Usually I say I've been playing a lot. That isn't necessarily true right now. Um, but I've been playing a handful of things. Um, let's start with, I'm looking through my little Excel phase page to see what things have bopped in the recent minutes. Um, I'll go ahead and start off with Blue Fire. Have you ever heard of Blue Fire? Blue Fire. No, I have not. Okay. Blue Fire is, uh, we were talking right before the show, Black Friday, what things did you pick up? I picked up like a dozen games, and this is one of them. Um, this is one I had it through Stadia Pro, played a little bit through Stadia, and then once Stadia died, I was like, let me start finding all the refugees of the games that I want to still have access to after Stadia's gone. Um, and what Blue Fire is, aesthetically, it's kind of like a 3D, uh, not Dark Souls, what's the other one? The, the Metroidvania everyone loves, this hand drawn, Void Heart edition. Fun. Oh, Hollow Knight. Yeah, thank you. It, it it has that type of aesthetic a little bit, like especially the start screen just looks like a the Hollow Knight start screen. But then once you get into it, it's more of a kind of Zelda y. Yeah, definitely like a getting a lot of Zelda here. Yeah, it think Zelda, but way more of a platformer. You get a little short range dash that you yep. use a lot in the game. Uh and it's just about, you know, finding different areas. It kind of reminds me of like Zelda slash Dark Souls slash Dark Siders. <laughs> Because it's a little bit grim, and a lot of the environments remind me of Darksiders. Um, but yeah, I've oh excuse me, um, I've gotten to the habit of you know I'll get home from work, which nowadays has been. I've already told told people I work at night, so you know I'm usually getting home around like one a.m., two a.m. Recently, I've been getting home three a.m., four a.m. because I have a different job that requires more responsibilities, and usually what that means is I'll grab my Steam Deck 
And right before I go take a shower, I'll like sit down on the edge of the bathtub because I don't want to put my dirty body on like my furniture. <laughs> yeah, your furniture, your sheets. Yes, yes. I, I also exactly. had to unlearn just touching things as the wife is not a fan of that. He's like, no, no, get in the shower. Yeah. Don't touch stuff. Like, eh. Yeah, I, I shower before I get into any things that I want to be yeah. clean. Um, but yeah, I'll take my Steam Deck in the bathroom and play it for like maybe 20 minutes at a time. And I am enjoying my time with it. It is a very good game. It's a very small game. I understand you can beat it in like six hours. So in that case, I'm like a third of the way through it already at this point. So um, I'm enjoying it. It's fun. It's good. It was like $3 because of all the sales. So I was like, this is a very good, you know, return on investment for me. Uh, But yeah, I've been playing a little bit of that. Uh, Highly recommend that to anybody curious. Uh, Steam Deck verified. So bingo, bingo. Uh, I've been playing Roller Dome. Or Roller Drome, excuse me. Uh, finally, I'm playing that. I picked that up on Steam as well for, to play on Steam Deck. And I am not... Just looking at gameplay, it seemed like a perfect game for me where it's like, oh, you get to move around, you get to do tricks, you get to you know, grind, and you're shooting people in slow motion. Like, this is a game meant for me. I love all of this. Uh, it is way more... I'm not going to say it's difficult to control, but it is way more skill-based and is way more you have to be very intentional about your movements than I expected. Um, Looking at this game, it reminded me a lot of Severed Steel. I don't know if you've heard of Severed Steel. Yes, yes. You've actually uh, covered that earlier in the the year on the show. Ah, Um, Yes, yes, yes. A wild game. Wild game. Very interesting to see, though. Yeah, it's it's a it's a buck wild game. I love Silver Steel. I've beaten it twice now this year. <laughs> I beat it for the first time this year. Then I bought it on Steam and beat it on deck again. Nice. Um, but but because I played that game a lot, what I like about that game is it is first person compared to Roller Drums third person. But in first person, it lets you do it lets you aim anywhere. So you can do like a backflip and shoot someone behind you, and it keeps that perspective going. And there's no like interruption in your aiming. What Roller Drone does is whenever you like are in the middle of a backflip, you know, off a half pipe or something, and you want to shoot somebody, you can't just make the direct line to shoot them. You it's like you're in this in this like range, like in this you're only allowed to aim within these few degrees. And so you have to go through those degrees in order to get someone. You can't just like do an awkward angle that will make your character do some weird flip. So it's a little hard to get used to that. I have to like kind of look at the car- look at the guy I want to shoot before I can actually aim and shoot at them. Um, and then also just trying to nail the tricks. The, the way that the combo meter works is you have to have trick variety. You can't just hit the same grab or the same grind every single time. And I forget that because I'm in the heat of battle. I'm trying to get perfect dodges. I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to kill people and stay alive. And now you want me to remember what tricks I've done recently <laughs> so that I don't do them again. It's a lot to keep track of for me. So I'm only like an hour and a half into Roller Drome. Um, I'm going to keep playing it because there is something there. I can see the fun, but especially like you can't unlock the next missions without completing enough challenges. That's a little bit annoying. Small things like that here and there. So I'm going to keep playing more of it and I'll have more to report once I've played more of it. Um, and then the last thing I'll mention, you know what? I'll mention this because this is literally last night. Uh, Modern Warfare 2. Played oh. some Warzone first time oh um, okay okay yeah I, I played the original warzone of course but this is the first time playing warzone 2.0 and it is good it is very very fun so, I was and just to be clear you, you you played like warzone not the dmz or did you play both oh no not dmz just okay just making sure i haven't um, i haven't played it yet so i, I was making sure like the mm-hmm. distinction fair enough fair enough yeah dmz i do want to try out um especially it seems like a mode dependent on ai yeah uh, characters a lot uh and warzone has that too even warzone has like strongholds you can go up to which is like a locked building or something right and as soon as you break in to get the objective a bunch of ai just spawn right outside that's cool and it's like oh fuck it, it is very cool and we've even pulled up on some folks who are fighting the ai and we're using them as a distraction to like pull up on them and like take him out from behind is this true i, um, I see a lot of the twitter clips is it is it actually really like the ai is actually really hard yes it's less that there i couldn't tell if that was warzone or dmz so i might be mis- oh, misspeaking AI. here same. oh it's the same okay okay, okay. okay. yeah yeah because dmz it's more like they have ai there but they have them there so you can get their weapon so you can extract with the weapon oh um, okay where warzone is just like an extra thing like added flair just to you know 
here's a fun thing to do, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> get in the stronghold, get some loot, blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, it, it it's not that the AI is like super smart or anything. It's just that they hit hard. Like they mm. have the same damage values as any regular players just about. So you can take them out easy, but they will fuck you up if you get enough of them around you. Um, but yeah, I, we were having a blast, had a full four man squad. We were going around. Nice. We finally got a win at the end of the night. That's cool. Like two or three hours. Uh, and it's it's the same Warzone experience from earlier, but it just feels so much smoother. Modern Warfare 2 overall is just a really slick, smooth feeling game. Everything about it just feels right. Um, and 2019, I said I also said, hey, everything about this feels right. But there was something about like just the UI and just like in, in Modern Warfare 2019, it felt like that game was barely holding it together sometimes, oh. especially by the time, you know, the second year of content came around for that game. It felt like that game was struggling to run on like a PlayStation 4. Um, this one, you know, I'm playing on PS5. Everything's running swimmingly. Everything's great. Uh, you know, party parties are staying together. Haven't had too many issues with people dropping out. Um, we had one person drop out, but it was only once out of what three hour session. Um, and what else? It's just very fun. It's it's hard to say anything new about it. If you played Modern Warfare 2 recently, or if you even played 2019, it's very similar to those experiences. But Call of Duty is always fun. It's always fun ranking up your weapons, yep. ranking up your character yourself. Uh, and Call of Duty is just a solid ass game, man. I it's hard to say anything new about it because it is more than most years. This year is more of the same. Yep. It's just this this is more of the same from 2 years ago rather than the previous one. It's the it, it's the same thing I I say about Overwatch. Funny enough it's from the same publisher, bro. Same thing I say about Overwatch like oh it's Overwatch, but Overwatch is if if not one of the best hero shooter out there. So like saying that seems um almost negative, but it's like I mean it, it is if you're looking for some sort of innovation, but if if you're if you're not and you're looking for a good time, there's nothing more I can say than that that makes it incredible experience. And I agree. I agree. I played. Uh, I, although I didn't play Warzone, I played a lot of the multiplayer. And I'm like, yeah. I mean, it's 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 Call of Duty. You know, like if you didn't like it, this won't change your mind. But if you do, there you go. Or if it's been a while and you've like taken a break out of a few, buy it. Although this is like the best selling one ever, you probably already have it. Mm -hmm. I will say. Everyone who's, if you're curious or not, I want to tell everyone to try this. There's a third person mode in, in Modern Warfare 2. Um, I People might remember the original Modern Warfare 2 also had a third person mode. Yep. That that was more SOCOM. This is more like Gears of War or something. And I say that not because it's very rigid, like Gears of War movement or anything. I say that because it feels like a proper third person mode. Like it feels like the game was designed to be played like this. <laughs> It is very strange, and it feels great. Like, playing it in third person feels great. I played a little bit of uh, regular multiplayer in third person. If you have Warzone, there is a third person version of Warzone, so you can run around that whole map in third person. Um, people should try that out, especially if... I, I think they did that just so, you know, people coming from Fortnite will feel at home. Yeah. But um, it, it feels good. It feels just as good as shooting in first person, which was very surprising to me. So uh, try that out, y'all. That's all I'm going to say for that one. But, uh, yeah, it's good. Very good. I have been playing a game that I find disheartening that not more people are talking about, and maybe this speaks to just their fault of releasing around just too many games, and I am kind of leading towards that. But uh, Entropy Center has come out, and it is ah. a fantastic experience that no one seems to be discussing, and I I feel kind of bad for the game as it is incredible so far. I'm in Act. 11 out of i want to say 16 so a little more than halfway through and i'm having a blast this game is so good the writing's very good it's a love letter portal i mean it is portal in every way except mechanics you like the actual uh instead of messing with space you're messing with time and it's i love it i like the main characters they have like witty uh back and forth with your gun um called astra i mean they just talk back and forth through uh puzzles and things and you're trying to save the earth i'll say and um you can tell this was heavily inspired by both bioshock and a little bit of half-life in both the environment and the way they are telling the story through indirect means like uh they have like 
little logs on computers that you can read and things and they give you context for stuff that's going on and i have theories like throughout the game i'm like oh i think this is going on like i'm playing like and i'm having such a great time and the actual story that they uh, propose to you in that like third act is so compelling and i'm really interested what's going on because i do think something crazy might happen at the end because they've peppered in some stuff but i very much enjoy this experience and i hope someone listening to this will go check it out because i am having a blast it is not like super long i feel like uh i feel like i've put in maybe five six hours i'm almost done with the game so eight to ten hour experience um the only downside is i heard the um trophy slash achievements are a little weird because you can't go back and get like the audio logs so like you'd have to replay the game which is that's a little unfortunate but if, if you don't care about that which i do care about achievements but i don't care all the time this is one of the things where i'm like i'm fine it's not a big deal i'll see if i can get them all if i don't it's not a huge deal but i implore everyone to go check it out please it is so fun i will not be shocked if it's half off around christmas time if you didn't pick it up for black friday uh do not uh worry i'm sure it will be on sale closer to christmas closer to new year's and uh yeah check it out i i, lo- I i'm in love with it i just looked it up to see if the golden words were on the Steam page, I don't see deck verified. Anyway. Ooh, that's <laughs> so. unfortunate as it's not incredibly complicated. Honestly, yeah. honestly, it's incredibly simple. There's not a lot yeah. going on. There's not even a lot of settings. There's literally two settings: audio and and control controls, I think, or something. Like that. So it's audio, like audio and Jesse Faden. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like it's very simple. So I'm actually shocked. I'm curious if it would um. If it would, I, I mean, I can't imagine it wouldn't, but I, but I'm not a technical person. It may be something complicated is happening in there. I don't know. It's it's no problem. I'm I'm hitting up the trusty Proton DB to see if it runs anyway. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, but but yeah, like the, the while I'm playing it, like it's very it's not bare bones. It looks actually very pretty sometimes, but it's not. You know, you're not playing this triple A crazy experience. It is definitely a double A kind of thing, but. Oof, I am having such a blast. So hopefully someone tries it. It is puzzly, of course. Usually that is a turnoff for me, but given the portal um, pretty much homage throughout the entire game, I had to give it a shot. And I, again, I fell in love. Uh, good news. It's it's not verified anything, but it does have a platinum rating on ProtonDB, which means you might be able to get 60 frames per second out of this. Oh, so, yeah. there you You're go. Steam Deck, it's a good one. So, yeah, I I might try it out. I don't think this is one that because I I've looked at it, too. It looks very interesting, but I'm also the type of person who understands that everyone likes Portal. Oh, and then I played Portal and I'm like, all right, these games are fine. And I never thought about them. again. (laughs) So, (laughs) yeah, I I actually am. I'm kind of right there with you with the Portal reference as I love the I love it. It's an incredible game. Not quite there with like one of the best games ever which seems like um a lo- what a lot of people think but it's incredible i mean yeah. uh, I'll, you, n- nothing less all you need to know is when i originally did keeping in 100 portal one and two were on there they were in the 90s <laughs> Ooh, all right all right and then they eventually I, got dropped for other games so. again portal one great portal two i in my opinion is better in every way so like they i definitely understand portal one not being up there portal two would be definitely higher on my list but you know what controversial take i had portal one higher only because i feel like people people have over talked portal two so much to where it's like all right yeah. i'm tired of like thinking I get it. of portal two at all but portal one I, is still like a genuine surprise i feel like half-life two is the same way i feel like people have just like not shut up about the game and it's like after a while it becomes like pretentious isn't the word i want to use but like it becomes a bit much and you don't really want to play it after a while because they're like all right it's not going to live up to what everyone said like it's just it's not going it's not going to be a perfect it's like experience. watching the godfather where it's like all yeah right, y'all been talking about this movie for 50 years citizen kane whatever like yeah, stuff like that where it's like yeah this was probably yeah. incredible for like the time but like when you play it now i'm like ooh, you know i'm loving it <laughs> like it's, it's that reminds me oh. speaking of half-life at some point, once they unlock my Facebook account because someone hacked into my account and tried to buy ads on my thing, and then I got suspended because of the hacked account. And once they give me my Facebook account back, I'm going to do something with this thing over here. I'm going to be playing Half-Life Alex on this baby. 
this thing right here. Ladies and gentlemen, this man has too much power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had hey, they had a Black Friday deal. It came with Resident Evil 4. I'm like literally all I'm gonna play on this thing is Resident Evil 4 and Beat Saber. So let me do that. Um and uh what is it? Uh Half Life was on sale for Black Friday too, so I picked that up and nice. now if they'll unlock my account, I can use it because <laughs> it's been sitting on the table for a week, but we'll see. Yeah, they actually made another Half Life game, which I actually didn't think they'd ever do. Um, of course that was to sell their giant VR system, but say it up time. Fucking giant one. I got a three hundred dollar one. Good point. Bingo I also bang. have, I mentioned earlier, I'm, I've been playing Pokemon. Um, I have nothing else to say that you probably haven't heard. Um, if this is the only podcast you listen to, I guess, I'll, I'll quickly say everything you've heard is true. It runs terribly. It is kind of ridiculous that Pokemon was just like, you know what? Yeah, release it. Um, but my God, is it compelling to play? I, I'm sorry. I, I can't sit here and lie to you guys. Like, I'm still playing the game. I'm about to finish the Pokedex. I've beaten it. Like, I, this is it is so fun. But God, does it run terribly? But I can't tell you the reason why I'm having fun. I think it's just Pokemon. It's awesome. It's fun. It, it's fun to catch them. It's fun to train them up. You get attached to them. It's great. But I don't think I have anything else at it. Again, it runs god awful. I mean, it is there at, at no point am I like, oh, yeah, I'm getting a stable 30. <laughs> like, I'm probably getting 25 to 20 at a given time, especially when you're driving around and a lot of Pokemon are spawning, clip in, uh, draw distance is terrible. I mean, just, uh, you know, I, I, everything you've heard. I have nothing else to add, but I, I, I can't stop playing it. So stuff. I, I do feel a little disingenuous because I do like it, but I'm not going to lie to you people. I, it's yeah, I'm having a great time, but. Technically, it's garbage fire. Year of the monkey paws. <laughs> yeah, There's we got what we paws. wanted, I guess. It's like, you want a great Pokemon game? Cool, it won't run. It you won't want run. another Bayonetta? Cool, half of it's trash. <laughs> <laughs> Would you have been happy if we just got the first Bayonetta now? And it just was over? I saw you kind of yeah. saying that. Yeah, I feel like yeah. thing way about certain franchises where I'm like, at this point... We should have just stopped. <laughs> yeah. it, it's less to even like Bayonetta 2 was fine. Like I like Bayonetta 2 a lot, but it was just more of one. And then three was like, we can't just be more of the same again. We have to change things up. And all the changes were bad. All of the ways in which yeah. they had to like spice it up were like, you went in the wrong direction. Yeah. I don't know why you did all this. This isn't what the franchise is about. Blah, I, blah, blah. I do want to bring up. It was a lot like uh, at the last season of Game of Thrones when they had the... um. Uh, character, I forget her name. Oh my god, it's been so long. But the the dragon girl. No, the um Brianna Tarth, which is the cool night chick that like she's like real tall and everyone makes fun of her because she's like a tall woman that wants to be a knight. Um, the way they wrote her character and one of the last things they ever did was she was like naked wearing um a uh like blanket and crying while like this other guy like drove away in a horse to go save his sister. Some of the worst character development out of the entire, this, this entirely strong woman reduced to like a damsel in the rain cry. I, that reminds me of what they did with the band ending where I'm like, is that the character? Oh, oh. <laughs> so you know what the ending is. Yeah. I, yes. I, Cause I, I was like, I'm not going to get to this anytime soon. And I need to know why so many people are mad. Wow. I yeah. can't even imagine someone sitting down in a writer room and being taken seriously <laughs> when saying that. No Let offense. Tell you. I don't mean to be mean, but I can't imagine sitting down with a lot of people and saying, this is what I want to do with Bayonetta, one of the strongest characters, maybe one of the strongest female characters in gaming right now. This is what I want to do with her. I yeah. can't fucking I believe that. I you on Twitter. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 he i heard you talking shit yeah um, hey, hey yeah oh well but yeah it's a whole thing man the, i can't the, believe the whole that. Band that situation is yeah it's the ending is disappointing but it's disappointing in so many different ways yeah yeah probably. yeah even, even reading what happened like i did that beforehand just because i wanted to know what people were talking about then i actually saw the ending and i'm like oh this is so much worse than reading it like there are so many smaller details that are like why is this here also and why'd you go for this little cheap shot when it doesn't mean anything? It's a whole thing. Oh, my God. Thing. I can go off. I, I actually, if you want to hear me talk more about this, there's a Bayonetta spoiler cast on VGU.TV. Ooh, I'm going to listen to it. Yeah. Nah, fuck it. I don't care. 
Um, yeah. uh, Ty Gallitz Rowe and Jared Green. Go ahead and listen to it. Great, great gentlemen. Um, I'm going to quickly, because uh, we've been, you have to leave soon and not soon, but I only got you for an hour. I'll quickly go over. I played Somerville and finished it. Very short game, about eight hour experience. Loved it. Mm. It's fun. Okay. I won't say it's as, I don't know. I, I haven't played Inside in so long. And I remember not completely agreeing with the full discourse around the time being like, oh my God, this is a massive. I loved it. I, I, I loved it, of course. Like, I liked the game a lot. I just didn't quite, wasn't quite there with everyone else. But I, I do still love the way they make their games, their storytelling, the way they kind of wove this tale throughout never really saying a word in the entirety of the game. It's all expression based, it's all little gestures and things of this nature. And I love that. It's very fun. And, this game was really fun. A couple of little plot holes here and there. Don't fully understand what happened at the end of the game, but I think that's the point. I don't think they want you to have a this is what happened in this game thing. Uh, even with this one, there's multiple endings too. So like you can have your own flavor to how you think the the, the game ends. So, But it was good. I, I really like it. I, I, first off, Game Pass game as well as... Um, yeah, Game Pass game, so go check it out. Like, I mean, if you have yeah. Game Pass, there's nothing to lose as it's included with your subscription. And if uh, you're thinking about picking it up, I think it's definitely worth it. Hold on. Let me double check the cost. Marvel, let's see, PlayStation. While you're looking that up, I'll say I've also been interested in this game. And Inside is one of, like, I think it's in, like, the top 30 of my favorite of all time. I respect um, that, yeah. So yeah, I, I really like the game a lot. The things I've heard about Somerville have made me think it's not quite on that level. But if you like that vibe, it's more of that vibe. So yeah. I could I could be down for that vibe. So I'm thinking about switching to it at some point soon. It's got to get done with God of War. <laughs> really, that's the thing. I don't want to start a story until God of War is done, really. Like, I'm not trying to play any special narratives until that's out of the way. And I'm so early in it. Good God. <laughs> I was trying to find the cost of this game, but I am not finding an easy way of doing this. I want to say it was 40 I definitely think it's worth 40 Somerville is $40? It might be 30 I can't. I can't remember. I have Game Pass, so I don't need to know. I, th I saw it once when I opened that store page, and then never again, because I had Game Pass, so I, I didn't, I, I didn't like have to spend the money, so I don't remember. Absolutely fair. It is 25 on Steam. <sighs> okay, I'm way off. It was 25 bucks then. I must be thinking of like something 40 else. For that, I, it's crazy. Maybe no entropy was twenty five as well. I think. Nah, I don't know what I thought that was, but um, yeah, it's definitely worth. I mean, it's definitely worth. Yeah. It's no no question worth twenty five dollars for me at least. Um, the uh, robots are taking over Emmett's house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> every every day at three p.m. my Alexa goes off. I don't know why. Um, well, it's not three p.m., so I don't know why you said that. Actually, shit, you're right. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god the world is changing yeah um everything anyway, changed when the fire up, nation attacked <laughs> exactly um i was looking up Somerville right as i typed it up you know what auto populated what summer ray remember summer ray no does that sound familiar at all no summer ray this was just some like attractive person who blew up on instagram like five six years ago i hadn't thought about oh, i see right her now yeah ever i life. can i see that I can definitely see yeah. that. Some influencer that when I was like right out of high school just ended up on my Instagram whoa. feed. I, it, I don't want to know what whoa is. Did things change for her? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I'm looking at her pictures. I, I Instagram oh, okay. always confuses me with what they allow and what they don't. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 That's definitely. Wonder why she got so many followers. Um, in any case, yeah, Somerville. <laughs> Somerville looks cool though. Even the Steam reviews are saying it's a bit mixed. It's like sixty percent positive. So, I I want to try it though. It does seem like the type of game I would like. Oh, main story is three hours, according to how long the beat. Shit, I might hop on that. Yeah, I yeah. Know. I mean, I guess if you, yeah, I, I definitely didn't take me three hours, but I took my time and I got stuck on I think two puzzles throughout the whole game. Uh, one was wow, I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> I didn't know it was a switch. I thought it was a light. So like, I like it. I thought the, it was a Steam Deck. That yeah, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> My God, I hate you. Um, there was a switch though, and I thought it was a light. So I'm like grabbing it and I'm trying to uh, mess with it, and I eventually accidentally hit the analog stick when I touch it, and he went bloop, and I'm like, oh my, f I, I I was probably there for thirty minutes. Like <laughs> I wanted to punch <laughs> up Joel. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, you could probably like throw. Yeah, you could probably get through that pretty quick, especially if you know what you're doing. Um, very pretty too, in in the pretty way that art style uh, can be. Very minimalist vibes. I like. Yes. It. Let's get into the actual show for the week. Room roundup streamer. Avoid the puddle. These are these names. Received a promotional box that contained a Tekken 8 shirt and a message that stated, quote, tune into the Game Awards live stream, end quote, and included a link to the Game Awards Twitch channel and a reminder of its December 8th date. More Tekken 8 stuff is going to be at Game Awards. Not super shocking, as they revealed it at um, Evo, and they also showed in the September state of play. Pretty sure that's right. Yeah, um, I think that's right. The more about the game so we'll see more at game awards we get excited a lot of things i think are that's why there's probably not too much news right now is who who was going to debut news is now just waiting for the eighth mm -hmm. bingo bingo not a second eight guy so i have nothing to state about this i'll move on if you also are not a second eight guy i have never been a tekken person though i did play a decent amount of tekken 6 on the psp but that's all i got <laughs> i expected an old friend uh that i held near to dear he's passed away now but he loved tekken 8 uh, so I will be playing this in his memory. Team Ninja made a statement about the reports made about the Dead or Alive and Ninja Gaiden franchise being revived. Speaking with uh, VGC, Team Ninja's creative director Tom Lee said this, quote, Dead or Alive and Ninja Gaiden are both long-standing pillar franchises for Team Ninja. These celebrated titles are synonymous with our studio history and a reputation it goes without saying. Even speaking about the development of our past and future projects, both of these important titles cannot be left without mention. However, there are no details or information to share on either of these franchises at this present time. End quote. Why is he making these statements, you ask? This is a reminder. Reboot rumors start, uh, started after a South Korean media outlet, RuliWeb, reported that Team Ninja's president, Fumiku Yusuda, showed both franchises at a conference in Busan in a slideshow under, quote, popular series, end quote. And... A general discussion of rebooting some was happening while that slide was up. Was this a mistake and he genuinely didn't mean to show this? Was she just showing that, hey, we're thinking about synergies or something and some sort of corporate messaging garbage and this just happened to come up? Who knows? Is it true that he really showed it up there and was talking about rebooting? All this was in a foreign language. I don't think we know. Not too many people reported on verbatim what it was said, because I assume no coverage was actually there. But other than, of course, um, really web. But uh, I wouldn't be shocked if we don't see anything, as they've repeatedly said they're not working on these things. But I thought it was important to mention, as it did kind of make the rounds a little bit throughout the week. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, when it comes to Dead or Alive, that's very obviously not being worked on because how do you get into the fighting game market now? You got your techies, yeah. you got your Street Fighters, you got your Mortal Kombats. Dead or Alive is one, it's hard to find a, a market for yet another type of that type of fighting game, the one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so I don't blame them on that. But Ninja Gaiden, man, these games are, there's a market. I, 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 I still don't understand why they haven't made one. I mean, I really do not understand. May, I, may, I can't. Like, what's the reason? They made. Well, they're making another type of. Like, they made an, uh, another type of Ninja Gaiden. Like, why just not well, make Ninja Neo Gaiden? Yeah. Like, why not just make yeah. Ninja Gaiden? <laughs> like, what well, you got to think. Niho, they're trying to get the the Soulsborne folks because Niho is, you know, it's that type of melee combat game. Same I, thing with Wulong. Um, they're they're going for that market, but like we his, we have Bayonetta's out here every now and then. We have Devil May Cry's every now and then. People are excited about and love these games. Ninja Gaiden could fit in there as well. Wanted Dead is about to come out, which isn't super anticipated or anything crazy, but there is a market for that type of game. They could capitalize on it, but I think they see the money in the Soulsborne genre, and also the open world genre with that other game they're working on with Sony. So, yeah, I don't blame them. They're chasing the money. So. Yep, they are. I, and I will say, if just to remind everyone, if Ninja Gaiden 2 came out right now, it would be called a Soulsborne-like mixed with Devil May Cry mechanics. Let's not forget <laughs> where a lot of the ideas came from. Ninja Gaiden was one of the first ones that kind of had that overly difficult, but like you're able to manage. Uh, obviously, Sekiro is more inspired by that in general as well but mm -hmm. i will still mention they were one of the first ones kind of making that it's hard and that's the point so like 
I don't know. It's just a little frustrating that they just refuse to make this very popular franchise and do with anything. They did do a collection, I guess, uh, semi recently, but that's I don't know. That's not what I mean. And also, those were terrible. They just put them together and re-release them. <laughs> they they're fine if you didn't play the originals. Yes. I'll say. Yeah. If, yeah. This, um, yeah. Agreed. I will say there is a slight difference in that Ninja Gaiden is hard because it is just difficult and you just have to be on it with the timing and everything. Sekiro. Souls board games or Sekiro. I was talking about uh, Ninja Gaiden. No, sorry, Ninja but uh, I apologize. I shouldn't have even interrupted you. But I, I what I oh, said was I, I retracted that and said Sekiro is more like that. Whereas. Oh, yeah, that's you, true. Once that's you true. in Sekiro it, at, at certain point, it's you got to just get good. But like yeah. and Ninja Gaiden is that same way. Like you got to get good. And also, if you like mess up, you can just get stuck in an area with no heals. And you just your best bet is either pray you have a different safe slot or you restart the game. So like mm-hmm. I agree too. Yeah. Dark Souls is very, very different where, oh, I can't beat this guy. Let me go mass level up in this other area. Come back and destroy everything. Well, also just how do I say this? A lot of from soft games, especially the Dark Souls side of things are so obtuse that they are way more intimidating because it's not just, oh, it's difficult. Let me get better. Let me find an item, blah, blah, blah. It's, oh, it's difficult. I don't know what I did wrong. I don't know how to, (laughs) I don't know where else I can go. Is there a way around this? Like they are so obscure sometimes that it's hard to figure things out. Of course, Elden Ring changed that. And the community is so big around these games that it changes that a lot. That's true. Uh, yeah, yeah, that is a good point. Community, then yeah, it's it can be difficult. And the way we're Ninja Gaiden, it's just like I know I have to go forward. I just have to have the skills. <laughs> so yeah. you know, it is what it is. Well, yeah, put. Sekiro and Ninja Gaiden are very similar. Yes, this is a rumor, and I'm um pretty sure this hasn't been confirmed yet. Monster Hunter Rise is coming to PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X, Xbox One, and PC on January twentieth, twenty twenty three, and will be available on Game Pass. Get excited! Hmm. Yay! <laughs> yeah, I uh, I'm not a Monster Hunter guy, so I can't really get excited for this. To yeah. be honest with you, I'm not either. But you know, any game that isn't a Switch exclusive anymore, thank God. <laughs> yes, I, I agree. Jesus, let your wings fly. Yeah, <laughs> let's not be on like an eight to ten year old hardware. <laughs> now, this is another example of I'm not doing a write up because it would just be stealing this gentleman's work. So I'm going to read highlight basically what I enjoy from this specific write up here. This is by Logan plan over on IGN. Um, you know what? Before I say anything, I'm just going to read. I'm just going to read it from software's latest. How earned widespread critical acclaim and its quality has been. Oh, sorry. What am I doing? The title Elden Ring developers compare working at from software to playing Dark Souls. From Software's latest how earned widespread critical acclaim and its quality has been reflected in the sales charts as well. It is the on top of all MPT charts right now. The game broke into the mainstream in a big way, having one of the biggest game launches on YouTube ever. Unfortunately, like so many widely successful AAA video game titles, it didn't take long for conversations of crunch, long overtime hours, and low salaries to surround developer from software. The discourse began in March, shortly after Elden Ring's release. First spotted by the gamer, this turns out a handful of software employees were turning to a Japanese job board called Career Connection to discuss poor working conditions and low pay. Uh, for context, this is essentially a Japanese version of Glassdoor, where current and former employees leave reviews for former, um, uh, former or potential applicants to talk about the working condition at the company so you know where you're getting into. The reviews of From Software left on career connections range from 2012 to 2019, with From Software's employee satisfaction rating sitting at around 2.6 out of 5 stars. Employee reviews cite low compensation for workload, 40 months of overtime per month, no paternity leave, and more. Now, months after folks started to notice the reviews of poor connections at From Software, GameIndustry.biz has revealed more stories from FromSoft employees about what's like to work as Elden Ring developer. According to a report, multiple sources said there is, in fact, quote, some level of crunching at, uh, end quote, at From Software. Shocking, I know, achievers, that there is crunch at this studio. The extent of the crunch at the CEO seems to vary from department to department. One of games industry that business sources say they have barely had to work any overtime. Another said, quote, during critical periods of game releases, I often have to work early mornings and overtime for two to three months, end quote. One source claimed that overtime wages are only half of their usual hourly weight, which differs from most Japanese companies where hourly wages usually increase in the late hours. 
From software employees also spoke about low pay at the studio. One source said, quote, salary is not adequate, end quote, and adding that their coworkers felt the same. According to data, uh, Form Software's employee is 3.41 million yen, which comes out to just under 25,000 USD. It is worth noting that the yen is very weak to the dollar and also that direct conversion from yen to USD may not be entirely representative of the employee compensation. I think that is very lightly put there. We're going to be going back to that figure in a second. However, from software operates in Tokyo, where the cost of living is higher than most other places in Japan. And also it ends with, even with some negative accounts, other from software employees said working at the studio has been a great experience. One employee even liked it from software's own Dark Souls, saying, quote, there's a lot of struggle to get things right, but if you get over the hump, it's very satisfying. It's just like you defeated a boss in Dark Souls, end quote. <laughs> Okay. End quote. Going to defeat a boss. <laughs> very, very funny way of putting that. Now, I would like to start us off, if I may so. Um, Emmett, uh, I want to go back to this figure. The average annual income for a From Software employee is 3.41 million yen, which comes out to just under $25,000. That sounds really low, right? Of course, he immediately notes yen to USD very weak right now. I think that is very, very a under uh 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 a misevaluated way of saying that uh so if you go over and just google average salary for japan so salaries in japan range from 130,000 uh uh yen per month minimum salary to 2,300,000 per month that's the maximum average salary and the actual maximum seems to be higher the median salary is about 545,000 uh yen per month which means that half of the population are earning less than that while the other half are mourning more than that that's what a median is median of course being the middle value yen to usd five hundred and forty five thousand japanese yen converted to us dollars is four thousand dollars is the median rate for a wow. japanese studio four thousand dollars now if we go back and convert straight yen to straight dollar so one uh or sorry one dollar to one yen let's see what happens mm -hmm. we get the actual value if you go convertly to usd to um sorry hold on things a little buggy yeah, here retail costs bob tell them <laughs> it is one three five point three four yen so one dollar is 135 bucks that is insanity the yen is incredibly low right now so comparing uh, those is going to make it seem way worse than it actually is because it is way worse but that is speaking specifically to the economy in japan the japan economy is in shambles just like a lot of europe is just like a lot of some asian countries are as well it's not great the only reason that we're probably good right now is we did a lot of, assumably at the time, crazy looking things, but it seems to actually kept us afloat from mass inflation, although inflation is really bad. It seems to be getting any worse, but that's what's kept us being so high is like the uh, the Fed keeps um, uh, increasing like interest rates and all these things, and it's just getting uh, the actual dollar value of your dollar is in increasing, but not as an extended rate as everywhere else in the world so i want to quickly bring up that that specific uh dollar figure although important to bring up it is much more important to make sure you make it understand that yes that sounds low here the average salary is even less than that so if you take in the average salary and also the average salary at someone at from software four thousand to twenty five thousand dollars that's over five times greater yeah. so a lot more than the median uh, so i will just wanted to bring that up that is important to bring into notion that not necessarily a good comparison as the yen is in the trash right now now all yeah. that being said i find it interesting that the um, FromSoft is getting some flack right now i think it's deserved if it's incredibly Toxic work environment. I can't speak to that as it doesn't seem like we have a lot of 
first-hand accounts we have some gaming issue up sources saying some things i'm i i can we will never know who these sources are but i would love to know position i would love to know maybe the department or something we just don't have a lot of information for me to plus you're probably them. not going to see you're not going to see a random from soft developer on twitter just talking about stuff because i i i don't know much about the culture of japan but one of the small things that i think i do know is that their culture around work is a lot different than it is in America. It is a lot where, different. Yeah. Like a lot of folks over there take pride in their work by yeah. default yeah. rather than trying to find like the actual job. You you work the job and you work it with pride no matter where you are pretty much. And like even the whole thing of um, they said in a story like, you know, overtime is traditionally rewarded with more money rather than less money and your salary getting cut down or whatever uh, or your rate getting cut down or and that's just part of the way that I understand how that works in that country. But at FromSoft, or really at any Japanese country, but FromSoft, since we're talking about here, it's hard to tell when the pride in the work from the individual is the problem or the company itself is the problem. In this context, it seems like it's a little bit of column B in that, you know, if you're going to be staying late, they should be paying you more to stay late because you are sacrificing some of your free time. That is something they should be doing. Um, but also the fact that it's taking this long because yes, Elden Ring was a big undertaking for them, but also they had three Dark Souls games. They had Bloodborne. They had all these other ones, Demon Souls. They've been making games for 20 plus years and things are becoming a problem now. Now I'm not saying that these problems could have been happening all 20 years, but is this a case of, Things have always been like this, but it came to a head with Elden Ring. Or is this a case of something like Insomniac? Actually, Insomniac is closer to that because <laughs> I don't know if you know much about Insomniac's history, but they were pretty. Everything there was pretty fucking rough until right after the PS3. Yep. Like it was crunch all the fucking time until after they dropped, I think, Resistance 3. Yeah. Was, yeah. So. I think that, sound, that sounds right. Like Resistance. And then they started focusing because, I mean, look at them. You, you look at me and say crunch doesn't happen in Insomniac. I say look at their game releases. They clearly do crunch. Now, we're not getting many reports on like toxic work environments or anything like that. So maybe there's just a like, culture that that's fine or, or maybe you're compensated equally. Uh, who knows? But you, you're telling me that that isn't a workhorse studio. It definitely is. So I'll say because Insomniac also doesn't make the type of games that need the type of polish and the type of exquisite attention to detail that something like a last of us or a god of war gets and you know i i, I they don't make game you can you can't make a last of us every year because that just takes too much creative effort and energy from not just the people at the top writing the game and all that stuff but just everyone um where you could probably easily make a spider-man every year you could probably make a ratchet every year not in that the manpower would be a lot because it would be a lot of manpower but like those are pretty simple games um which is why yes they are wor they are a workhorse studio but it's plausible to me that they can make one or two of those games every other year and not be crunched in a way where if you think back to the ps3 generation they made three resistance games. Yep. They made four Ratchet and Clank games. They made Fuse all within what seven years? Like Fuse. It, it's insanity. <laughs> yeah, I know. People don't remember Fuse. No, Fuse everyone does not remember Fuse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they it, should it, though. It was crazy. Um, but yeah, like they were definitely killing themselves. And even before that, they were make all the Ratchet and Clank games were coming down to the wire. Like, if if you've seen like behind the scenes stuff about the Ratchet and Clank series or just Insomniac in general, PS2, PS3 era. It was fucking rough, and I don't think that is still the case now, but I do have to believe that even though things aren't as rough now, their culture now is informed by how it was. So it might not be people killing themselves, but there is probably a different pace of work than an insomniac or than a, uh, than a naughty dog or something like that. So yeah, when it comes to From Software, I also do feel like their games are, they're kind of in the middle as far as like, how much how much quality of work i could imagine they work on because all these souls games they're not all the same but they all pull a lot of elements between each other dark souls one through three all extremely similar to one another uh and even when they do spinoffs of like the sekiro variety or the bloodborne variety you're pulling a lot of elements that are the same between all these games but they come out pretty frequently like every other year you're getting a new FromSoft game damn near so 
you know, I don't know how to, I don't know. I, I don't know how you really work with that. So we'll see. Uh, I'm sure if things are actually going really bad there, it's going to be beyond the passion that people would have working at a place like this in Japan. So you'll hear more about it if it's really that bad. But right now it seems like they just need to turn the dial a little bit less to where they're not working so much. Um, just a little bit. It doesn't seem like a Ubisoft situation or that division situation. But, you know, they can make the tweaks there and, you know, be a better company. Definitely. I can see that. Yeah, we'll have to see. I, I Before I, like, lambast them publicly, I need to just see more. as a couple sources and then the just referencing a site that people leave. Yeah. I know, and it might work like Yelp that, you know, you, you, you only... You, you, that Well, that and you don't... You, you go to a restaurant, you have a great experience. You don't go to Yelp to tell them how good it was, right? You go there when you have a bad True. experience. That's why Yelp doesn't really work. So maybe that's the situation. I don't know. I again, I want to see more. If there's an issue at FromSoft, I'm sure we'll hear about it. Jason Schreier, I'm sure, is like, what? What was it? Bad work experiences. <laughs> He's already out there. So for sure, for sure. And just for context, so uh, everyone knows how serious Insomniac was back in the early 2000s, from the years of 2002 all the way to about 2009, uh, they had a game every year. Yeah. <laughs> Every year, seven years, uh, every single one. Like it was, and it wasn't the same. It wasn't a Call of Duty thing. It was. And it was Call of Duty. It was ratcheting. Break. It was a lot of ratchet. <laughs> we have a ratchet, and then the three resistances. Yeah. Um, yeah, Jesus, I, 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 I always forget. Later. There's this many ratchet and clanks. My God, uh, Fuse was 2013. Um, ah, so four years after 2009, and that's when they. I mean, they didn't really slow down, but like they kind of did, not really, because then they started doing two. Jesus, twenty eleven Resistance three and Ratchet and Clank all for one. Twenty twelve Ratchet and Clank Full Frontal Assault and Outer Knots. Twenty thirteen Fuse Ratchet and Clank Into the Nexus. Twenty fourteen Sunset Overdrive. The very next year, four games: Slow Down Bull, Fruit Fusion, Bad Dinos, Digit and Dash. They did just a bunch of iOS garbage, probably. And in twenty sixteen Ratchet and Clank Song of the Deep. Edge of Nowhere, The Unspoken, Feral Rights. What are they doing over there? Like, my God, they snort, they snort yeah. cocaine and they make video games, clearly. Yeah, they're fucking crazy. Now it seems like they're in a better place where now, instead of it just being, we're going to make a bunch of games, and even if they're smaller yeah. or whatever, they're coming out. Now it's just, hey, we're all on Spider-Man, we're all on Ratchet. We're focused. So we don't have to make, like, these random things and see if it works. Like, now we are, we are the Spider-Man studio. We make Ratchet and Clank every now and then. And now we might be a Marvel studio. Who knows with their Wolverine game? I'll be curious yeah, to see what their future looks like. As am I. <laughs> uh, this is going to be a quick one. Um, uh, CMA arguments. We keep talking about it. I just want to bring this up. Xbox stated that we will not see next-gen systems until 2028 at the earliest. Now, I, I want to uh, say specifically next-gen systems until 28, 2028. Next-gen I think we're very close to the Series Y, PS5 Pro, whatever you want to call them. But Series a lot of people are, yeah, I don't know what the fuck it's going to be called. But Kyle XY is here. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to bring that up. A couple people are throwing that around. It was interesting. Uh, there's a lot. of The CMA is deep. I actually might do a full write-up on everything that they talked about maybe next week. Who knows? But it is wild stuff. I don't know if you've been keeping track with it, but like, the arguments they've been trying to make about like the exclusives arguments about like um, game pass and how profitable it is or how, how many users they have. There's so much, I don't, I don't know if you've seen there's redacted stuff. So like they make a uh, PlayStation like says like call of duty uh, like uh, is like a certain amount percent of all days, uh, week monthly active users, and but the percent is like marked out, so you don't know how much it is. But like, there's so much cool stuff that the more you read, the more you're like, I wonder what that says. Yeah. Like, is like yeah. 20% of every monthly active user on PlayStation playing Call of Duty? Like, that's fucking crazy. Like, that's a lot of money. I wouldn't be surprised. That's wouldn't a lot of money. If they, if if even if you lose like half of them, like that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've been keeping up just slightly on the CMA stuff. I haven't been like digging deep into the documents or anything. It's but, a lot, you know, dude. I, I read the headlines. I I tell the I see the stories that people are writing about it. It's it's interesting. I just want this whole saga to be over. Like, Me too. I just want to be done. Like, yeah, because this has been a story for almost a full year. Yeah. At this point. 
Yep. So I'm ready to close this thing. Yeah, it's gonna be a full year in a couple months. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just yeah, I, I want it to be over. So yeah, too much. I wanted to be over just so we could stop talking about it. And, it's, and and now we see what life's going to be like and, and stop like hypothesizing mm-hmm. these things. Um, yeah. And also both surprised and not surprised that more people aren't talking about because there's crazy stuff in that thing. But first off, it's a long read. And also we were around holidays. So like, you know, now it's oh, yeah. like that had to be a strategic drop, too. I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. Todd Howard appeared on the Lex Friedman podcast and we have some newsworthy things now. I say newsworthy. There wasn't a whole lot. I'm almost done with it. It's an intriguing look at this, at Todd Howard. Um, more of a technical look, more than anything. Um, I'm, I'm new to this Lex Friedman guy. I don't know if he has a lot of game developers on or anything like that, but this, is, this was really good and really fascinating. He asked a lot of good questions. There's a couple of things where I'm like, oh my god, why did you let that slip? Like, ask him, a que- like, ask him something about that, but he, Todd Howard, he's a smart guy. He was tight-lipped on everything. He didn't say anything he didn't want to say. Uh, but uh, he spoke about a couple things I'm going to highlight. He spoke about feeling pressure in delivering a, quote, system seller, end quote, in regards to Starfield coming out. A little bit of pressure probably from Microsoft specifically. Speaking about upcoming Machine Guns title, Indiana Jones, what genre will it be? Ton Howard says, quote, and also I haven't got to this part in there, so I can't, this isn't me reporting, this is actually from IGM. Quote, I will just say it's a mashup. It's unique. It isn't one thing intentionally. So it does a lot of different things that myself and the folks at Machine Guns have wanted to do in a game. So it's a unique thing, end quote. That's the most PR thing I've ever read in my life. It's going to be an action-adventure game. He's blowing smoke up your ass. Um, but, so everything I've listened to and just a couple of reports, I, that's everything I could pull. Again, not to say that it is not a great interview. I think it's actually very good. But I can't find anything to report on. It was a lot of cool things about Todd Howard's life. He started working on like the Apple II. How he got to work at Bethesda, what was the ideas like around Skyrim, how does he make quest lines, what does he like about quest lines, what does he like about like systems and mechanics, like there's a lot of cool stuff, and I can't wait to go back to it, I think I have like 20 minutes left or something like that. Again, oh, okay. I recommend everyone go give it a listen, it was fascinating to hear this guy talk about things about Skyrim, things that he wants uh, done around Fallout, like what what what's different about Fallout and Skyrim, like when you make them, it's, it's good stuff. Check it out, but those- but yeah, but like I said, it, nothing newsworthy, but it is all fascinating shit about one of the most talented people in our industry right now. Yeah, I just want this Indiana Jones game to hurry up and come out so I can get my Wolfenstein 3. That's all I care about. I hope we get a Wolfenstein 3, man. I, I, I loved Wolfenstein 2. I didn't play Youngblood because just everyone said it was bad, so I was like, I'll just believe you guys and, and not play it. Um, You don't need to play it. It has a cool story thing at the end, but you can look it up on YouTube. Yeah, I should I should just look at because that's the one thing I wanted to play it for was like okay I kind like the story is really cool like that the premise, but it's like I don't you know I don't story happens play. at the beginning and then there's twelve to eighteen hours of game and then there's story at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo unexpectedly shuts down Smash World Tour Championship. Put it on IGN speaking to the organizers, they said, quote, without any warning, we received notice the night before Thanksgiving from Nintendo that we could no longer operate. This was especially shocking, given our discourse with Nintendo the past 12 months. Since then, we have been working around the clock to take the proper steps logistically, as well to prepare the statement with proper legal guidance, end quote. So uh, Nintendo was just waving around the law hammer, as they do all the time. What did you make of this? I, I, I have my piece, but... What what did you think when you read this, or if have you did you even see this? Uh, I did see this, and I feel the same way I feel about a lot of Nintendo's interactions with the fan community. I don't know another company that is so hostile to its fan base. Like it is very strange. Like yeah, you might have someone like like Disney is someone who I think is also pretty hostile to a lot of their fan base, but a lot of that stuff is you know Disney has so much power, so they can wield it and just do whatever they want and you know they they can put on how how do i say this people know not to mess with disney because they're so big yeah nintendo isn't a big company like playstation's a bigger company technically than them same thing with xbox which is part of microsoft which is of course needs no introduction um they aren't a threat because they're big they're a threat because they are intimidating they don't like you have some of the most beloved ip of all time people are going to want to do stuff with that IP 
if not in like creative ways, they, they're going to want to like have a fan event for your game. Like these are all like, you could say this is free PR or free marketing or whatever, but people are going to want to play these games. And it's so weird to see Nintendo, not just this time, but regularly throughout the last couple of years, just say, hey, we are not involved with any of the stuff you're doing. Even if you want to work with us in an official capacity, like, it's cool that they were working with them in an official capacity and then to pull the rug out from them and have them lose all this money. That's the really scummy part. It's very it's strange. Weird. Very strange. Cause yeah. what I'm just curious what changed. And again, they can't say I'm sure they're under so much legal guidance right now to not say too much, but they've been, I mean, I think they started in like 2012 or something. I don't remember um, yeah. the exact date. I mean, I'm not sure how long this specific thing has been going on, but I just understand that they're always having Smash tournaments. Like, and if Nintendo's working with you on a Smash tournament, it seems like okay, you should be good to go. I just, it just feels like if they were gonna drop out, finish this one first. Just get through with this event first, so you're not pulling the rug out from people and making them lose a lot of money. Because people's, I'm not gonna say people's lives are gonna be ruined with this because I don't know the context fully to be able to say that, but. This is going to fuck up a lot of plans. This is going to fuck up a lot for a lot of people. And it's all on Nintendo's back. It's just because Nintendo said no. It's not because of any actual physical thing that is hard to do or impossible to do. It's just because they changed their mind. And that just frustrates me. Because you didn't have to. You could have just stuck with your plan and then said no next year. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. So I know the War Tour started 2020, but I'm pretty sure... I think this is like an, a, a growth from something else. Hmm. I should have researched well, I, this prior. I apologize. But this the actual format of this thing started in 2020 to um, pretty much react to COVID. Uh, to have like an uh, online pretty much championship. Uh, so maybe this is newer and I'm thinking of something else. But I could have swore this came from another thing. But regardless, they mentioned specifically that they had discourse. They lined, they did everything apparently that they were told, and they still got smacked down by Nintendo. And again, you mentioned it before Nintendo would hit no slouch when it comes to lawyers, they don't give a fuck. They will, they, they, if they see you doing a Mario cap or any, I mean, I mean, anything, cease and desist, boom, like right to you. Any, yeah, I, I'm reminded of overall, now I'm in debt. I'm in debt. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, there's always the funny thing of, um, the memes where, uh, uh the uh, south africa uh, south american kid like makes a um metroid game and it's like a huge thing and shigeru she, miyamoto himself uh went personally to serve him a cease and desist letter like there's like funny stuff like that where like people have made memes because they are so legally conscious over there that it's almost to a point where it's overbearing but in most regards i don't blame them it's their ip legally they're fine that's what they do um, I feel bad for people. I I felt bad for the uh, Metroid guy. There was a guy who made a fan made Metroid game. It yeah, lasted all of one day until um, someone at Nintendo saw it and went, "Nope, bam, take it off." Where or we're, I mean, again, I don't blame them, but it does kind of feel bad when you're kind of fighting your own community there. Again, don't blame them. They're in the legal right. That's what they're gonna do. And I'll say, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, just to finish quickly, um, they also do this with content creators specifically. I don't do Nintendo stuff a lot, but mainly because they're so overbearing. I don't even really want to cover them half the time. One, I don't want to show their stuff. Two, I don't want no. I don't want to strike down from some random clip. That's actually why I stopped showing clips on here, just because you just with it, random things happen. Like they see something, boom! Like you, you, you got like a thing on against this it's just uh, it's, triforce block <laughs> yeah it's just annoying so i i just don't i don't really talk too much about them because i don't need to show something they get upset about whatever but uh what were you gonna say all i was gonna say is i totally understand why they're like that with their ip because if you really think about it that's all nintendo has yeah it, their their hardware ain't worth a damn it comes out and it's decent hardware. It's only decent when it comes out. Then about a year or two later, it's like way too behind. And, you know, that's all they have. All they have are the games. Like, you don't play Nintendo for anything, not their ecosystem, not their ergonomics of their controllers. You nope. don't play for any other reason than you can't get Mario anywhere else. I remember so 
I remember the CEO, I can't remember his name, so I apologize. This was a long time ago. Not a long time ago. This is probably 2013. They said, like, we're a toy company. So, like, what do they have? They have IP. And they don't have much else, like you said. Like, what what else? Like, if, if Mario became irrelevant tomorrow, what happens to them? I don't know. I remember when uh, the Wii U was in bad shape, people were, like, theorizing, like, Maybe they'll start a publisher like thing, and then they release the switch, and everyone shut the hell up. Um, but like I remember that, like what if if all else fails, they become a Sega. They become a we have IP, we have some studios left. We'll see if we can work something out and and stay afloat or something. But yeah, I agree. Like I don't again, I never blame them, but it always kind of feels bad. And this specifically, I can't imagine why you care about a world tour champion i i just i couldn't imagine being uh someone at nintendo and being like oh they did a world tour oh yeah we should get rid of that like i guess i don't know maybe they want to avoid a i forget there was some oh my god was oh, it Evo? The thing at Evo yeah like that's the, right the uh thing? yeah yes like yeah, maybe they I just don't want to be attached to this stuff anymore so they're like we can't like they're so careful with like their identity, I guess I'll say. Like they probably just don't want to be attached to any any sort of thing because they can't themselves sign off on it. Maybe that's why. I don't know. Yeah, possibly. the The last thing I will say though is it's very funny to think of like publisher only Nintendo because then they'd have to learn how to make an HD game. I was yeah. <laughs> then they would have to learn what 4K means. Um, I will say that was a that was a. F- funny time in hindsight it was ridiculous that we were even mentioning it but i remember back then people were having serious arguments like would nintendo publish on xbox like would nintendo publish playstation games like i remember that being a thing like what if would they what if we have a dreamcast situation with the next nintendo product and like they have to like they jump out and they trigger the prayer shoot and they're like hey we're just publishing now we're just gonna release games i don't know i don't think that'll ever happen definitely now they they definitely have a nice golden parachute uh, for them set up, I'm sure. But always interesting what seemed like uh, wise words back then now are pure nonsense. <laughs> That's how I'd be sometimes. Date update. Of course, when Game Pass releases their little sheets, we read them to you out loud. Remember, Emmett, you can stop me at any time and we can discuss a game that I mentioned. Available as of listening to this podcast, Eastward, Cloud Console, and PC, Walking Dead, the final season, which I believe marks the entirety of Walking Dead on Game Pass, I'm pretty sure. Cloud Console and PC, totally reliable delivery service for PC. This is everything coming soon, but again, you're going to be... Uh, actually, no, never mind. Sorry. So this is everything coming soon. Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga, Cloud Console, and PC, that's December 6th. Very wise... And I feel like not a lot of people are discussing how wise of a move this is. How many family members are going to be like, oh, here's your Xbox, Timmy. And he's like, I wanted the Lego game. And they're like, that's what I forgot. And, oh, well, there's Game Pass. Blah, blah. You know, fucking there's Game yeah. Pass. Boom. You don't have or to buy it. Everyone's at the house for Christmas. Hey, what are we all going to play together? Bingo. Game Lego. Pass. Boom. Mm-hmm. Hello, neighbor two. Cloud console PC, December 6th. Another wise move. They're doubling down on the kid games. Mom sees on Game Pass. What's that? Oh, uh, that's their Netflix thing. Boom. Buy that. Saves me. That's probably 40. That's probably 30. That's 70. So you can spend six months and be fine. Bingo, bingo. Available day one on Game Pass. This is a new release too. So get excited. Chained Echoes Cloud Console and PC December 8th. Another available on day one on Game Pass. Metal Hellsinger, December 8th. This is only for Xbox One. It's already been out for the Series S and X and PC. So this is only for Xbox One. Correct me if I'm wrong at home. I believe this is the first time this has ever happened. I don't think we've had just an Xbox One title added. Uh, uh, post sometimes do it. Series S and X, I don't think, but I could be wrong. They, they've definitely had some Xbox One games on here but it's just been it'll say console and pc but it won't specify if it's like just series x or just mm. xbox one but they definitely do it so oh okay okay and then Watkins jr get excited high on life cloud console and pc Ooh. is going to be december 13th thought this was the 12th i thought it was the 12th too maybe i'm an idiot available uh, day yes, one on 
Game Pass. <laughs> wow, yeah. I was right there with you, brother. Do you know why? I know why now. It says the 12th on Xbox, and the reason they do that is they say, like, 12.00 a.m. Tuesday. Uh, okay, but that's technically, or sorry, Monday, but obviously that's not the case. That That's why. I just saw that on the game store, and I always forget they do that. It's so annoying. Just say the 13th. Yeah. <laughs> just say also, the real date. True. Also, I forgot to say Metal Hellsinger. If you haven't played it, definitely try that out. It's a fun game. I beat it recently. I haven't tried it. I, I keep hearing I should give it a shot. Like, it's up to you if you like this game, honestly. Like, there isn't a consensus. Like, if you like rhythm, if you like this specific type of game, and if you like music, like, boom, there it is. But, like, that's so yeah. many outliers. So, like, you'd have to really yeah. know your stuff to, to know if you would like this or not. Four hours long won't hurt to try it. Potion Craft console and PC December 13th. I want to read this one. Hmm. Potion Craft, an alchemist simulator where you physically interact with your tools and ingredients to brew potions. You're in full control of your whole shop, invent new recipes, attract customers, and experiment to your heart's content. Just remember, the whole town is counting on you. I might try that out. That seems kind of fun. I usually don't play the simulators, so I imagine I might not be into this, but no harm, no foul. It's on Game Pass. I definitely want to I want to try out Potion Craft because I've actually played a little bit of Potion Craft on oh. PC. It is deck verified, but it is very mouse dependent. And Oh, that must be annoying. Deck, yeah, it's it's just a little bit annoying because the touchscreen works for everything, but it's like just off enough to where I don't want to use it. Hopefully this means that they'll add some proper you know, controller controls to Potion Craft and I can play that game more readily there. But I enjoy Potion Craft. It's a good game, so definitely try it out. I'm. Uh, this tells you how stupid I am, Emmett. I forgot there's a touch screen on the Steam Deck. Like you, literally, literally a touch screen on it. Like you, like anything you touch. Yeah, you just it's it's like any other touch screen, but it's just not the most. Like sometimes they'll have a mouse in game that is your pointer finger, and the mouse will be like on the left edge of your finger rather than right. In the not, perfect. You think it be. It's not perfect. Yeah, yeah. Not perfect. Yeah. Not perfect. Okay. Yeah. Hot Wheels Unleashed Game of the Year Edition Cloud Console and PC. This is gonna be coming to you December fifteenth. Another kid-friendly game. Hot Wheels Unleashed Game of the Year Edition. Rainbow Billy. The Curse of the Leviathan. Cloud <laughs> Console and PC, December 15th. I have to read this. A wholesome creature capture 2.5D adventure puzzle platformer. Well, we just wanted to put as much things in this sentence as you wanted, huh? You could have cut that in half. 2.5D adventure puzzle platform. Boom. With over 30 hours of gameplay, it is family-friendly, openly accessible, RPG-infused adventure in which you must save whimsical creatures by bringing back color to the world you once knew. Very simple, but I kind of dig it. That that first part was too much. Hell yeah. A game about integration. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't read any of this. We go straight to leaving. So this is everything leaving the December 5th. Reminder. You have to buy it before it is leaving the service to secure your 20% and, of course, keep it in your library. This is everything that's going to be gone on December 15th. Aliens, Fire Team Elite, Cloud Console and PC, Breath Edge, Cloud Console and PC. Hurts my heart a little bit. Dragon Quest XI, Echoes of an Elusive Age, Cloud Console and PC. I stopped playing it. I need to go back and finish it out. I might actually have to go ahead and just buy this just so I have it if I ever want to go back. Firewatch Cloud Console and PC. I never played that game. And I heard mixed things. Ooh, I was like, eh. it's it's worth playing. I liked it. Okay. It, it's it is disappointing on purpose. I think uh, <laughs> that's what I heard. I was like, oh, so the ending is exactly what you expect. All right. Well, I'm good. Yeah. Everyone, every, if you haven't played Firewatch, go ahead and check it out. You can beat it in one night. Just play it. Lake Cloud Console and PC. One Piece Pirate Warriors Four Cloud Console and PC. Neoverse Cloud and Console <laughs> Race with Ryan Cloud Console and PC Record of Lodos War Deed de 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 Lit in Wonder Labyrinth Cloud Console and PC English Jesus Rory McElroy PGA Tour just on console that was an EA Play title that is leaving so technically it's leaving EA Play Transformers Battlegrounds Cloud Console and PC that is everything leaving Game Pass, December 15th. Whoop de woo. This is your games with gold titles for December. Colt Canyon, available December 1st to the 31st. Bladed Fury, available December 16th 
to January 15th. Keeping the trend that Games with Gold is utter trash. I respect it. If you're going to be known for something, at least be consistent, I guess. PlayStation Plus monthly games for December are as followed. Incredible month, everyone. Please listen. Mass Effect Legendary Edition for PS4. Biomutant PS4, PS5. That is signed on by uh, one and only Emmett Watkins Jr. with us today. Divine Knockout Founders Edition PS4 and PS5. So technically getting two PS5 titles. They're very exciting. But most exciting, you're getting three games for your PlayStation Plus membership this month. You're getting the Mass Effect Legendary Edition. You're getting Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3, all DLC included. Incredible experience. Please, please, please at least add it to your library. I'm not saying you have to play it now. No, but all you got to do is click a button. You click a button, boom. It's with you as long as you have PlayStation Plus. I implore everyone to at least give it a shot. If you do not like RPG elements, you can just skip the first one. Go straight to two, much more action-oriented, much more infused with an action and an RPG game. Whereas the first one, much more focused on a like a RPG experience. Yes, Fantastic yeah, games. I played, I played Mass Effect 2 myself way back on PS3, so I'm looking forward to finally playing 1 and 3 <gasps> in a more modern form. So, I meant please. Yeah. If there was ever anything in between us, sexual or otherwise, you would play <laughs> all of the Mass Effect trilogy. All right, Tess, I'll take you <laughs> to fucking Chicago or wherever they went. I forgot. Salt Lake. So, yeah, yeah that, that's where they first went, and then they had to go to uh, somewhere else. I will say, yes, play Mass Effect, but also Biomutant is really cool. It is the best PS3 game of all time, so <laughs> definitely, definitely try that out. I say that all the time, but no, if I say that, you know every, what I mean. Everyone knows what you mean. I, I hope everyone listening to this show knows exactly what you mean by that. Yes, yes. Biomutant is very cool. I actually recently rebought it on deck because I think that's just a perfect game to play portably. Um, and also Divine Knockout. I knew nothing about this game. I still don't. Then I looked up gameplay. It is basically a think your Brawlhalla or your Smash Brothers, basically where you're building up the percent and knocking them out of the ring. It's that, but it's 3D and it's behind the back. So it kind of looks like Spellbound, if you remember that uh, spell casting battle royale. Yes. A couple years ago. <laughs> Forgot about it that. It looks like that, but a Smash Brothers gameplay. And oh. Really All right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, hey, I try it out. All you need is PlayStation Plus. Again, remember, your PS Plus monthly game stayed with Essential. I actually downgraded because I just don't think uh, the other two are worth it, to be honest with you. So I downgraded. I don't use any of it. So yeah. I'm just Essential right now. I'll say Extra's worth it. Premium's not worth it. But I bought like three years of Premium when they had the PlayStation Now bug that let you buy a bunch of years. So. Actually, I probably should have done that too. But I, I Extra, if I'm ever enticed to do that, I'm just going to go straight to Extra, I think um yeah, premium seems really like good. seems just egregiously bad like it just seems like they barely say, pay attention to to the premium as we've been recording someone has found on the playstation servers that it just got updated that uh battlefront 2 the original from 2005 whoa it's in there it's the psp version but it's in there <laughs> see that's what i, I want to see weird stuff like that like i i would love more psp stuff and PS, uh, PS1, like, they have such a breadth of shit to put on there, and they're just like, well, here's one, here's one, here's another, like, it's like come on, man, here's let's get some of- more. Whatever's, yeah. Give me the Toxic event. actually, don't give me the Toxic Avenger. Yeah, ma- maybe that. not that. <laughs> Wait, I'm thinking of the Yellow Avenger, the Spongebob game, not the Toxic Avenger movie that used to be on D4. That was a game, but too. I, no. Oh, it was a game? Yeah. Ew. <laughs> yeah. That's unfortunate. A- NES um, game, I think. Wow. But yeah, give me Burnout 3 Takedown. Give me that. Give me some SSX Tricky. You know, give, it, give us the classics. That's what we want. Breaking Something news! Uh-oh, what happened? Naughty Dog changed their profile picture. No. <laughs> I kidding. have no idea if this... No, I, no, I'm serious. They changed their profile picture. I have no idea if this means anything. Uh, Achievers, if you're audio only... Can I show video? I, I think I can, actually. Is it this blue thing? Yes. I don't know. It, it, uh, again it's probably absolutely nothing but uh, i found it yeah. funny that as soon as i clicked on twitter iso christian from uh podcast pxn and popcorn uh pod literally had me when uh naughty dog changed their profile picture when it means absolutely nothing and it's the uh it's the like like crazy meme where like you're pointing and freaking out um so like <laughs> I, that day. was that was the first thing i said i was like all right just for him i have to show this mm. but um 
Let's see if I can actually. I mean, looking boom. at it now. Okay, yeah, you you got it up for the visual people. Yeah, for I do. The audio listeners, uh, oh, you, yeah, you got to scroll up a little bit. It is basically, it's the Naughty Dog paw print, but it is blue and like cracking a little bit. So it's either diamond that's cracking a little bit or more likely like ice. It would either be, yeah, I'm thinking ice or some sort of stony, like, I keep saying mithril. I just watched Lord of the Rings uh, TV show uh, yesterday, and they said mithril. So for some reason, I keep wanting to say mithril. I don't think that's right, but it's a very uh-huh. light blue crackling thing. Again, probably means nothing, but it's, it's fun. It's fun to exaggerate. It could just be a holiday. Hey, here's the Christmas. Hey, it's dog. cold. So so let's let's get like ice. Like I, it must be so annoying being the person who does stuff for like Night Dog like that, because they must be like, we have to do this, and people are gonna be like, oh, is it a game? <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll see if anything pops off by the eighth. Probably, if this is anything, it'll be something we know by the eighth. I I, I apologize to you, Emmett Watkins Jr. Did you say Battlefront or Battlefield 2? Battlefront, the Star Wars game. For some reason, I heard Battlefield 2. I apologize. I just saw Star Wars Battlefront 2 Classic, PSP listed on PSN, and I was like, did he say Battlefront? <laughs> so I must have, one, not been listening to you, or two, I, I'm just an idiot, my man. So. But, you know what? If they gave us Battlefield 2 Modern Combat, because that game is lost to history, yeah. I, would, I would be happy about that. Bro, <laughs> look at me in the eyes. We, we playing some Battlefront 2? I'll upgrade. I'll upgrade to that tier, man. I'll play some Battlefront Two for you. I used to, bro. I never played it back in the day. I, did you not? Oh my! I used to play it so much. It, it, it probably doesn't hold up. I don't know if it does, but dude, I used to. PSP version, no. <laughs> no, probably not. But I used to play. Oh my god, it was so good, <laughs> so good, dude. I loved it so much. I was a siphon filter guy. That's where I got all my multiplayer PSP age. <laughs> I was playing that fucking combat ops. Oh boy, let me tell you, I was a menace <laughs> with that poison dart rifle. Ooh, Ooh yeah. baby! I, I'm double checking. Doesn't look like any break, other breaking news. I like trying to check Twitter. I'm trying to get in the habit of checking Twitter. Be like, anything crazy happen? Doesn't look like it is. Uh, everyone has found the Kanye West video, so we're all gonna be reacting to that for the next couple days. Uh, Achievers, if you did not know what's gonna happen, uh, you do. You 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 know what's what he said by now. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's he's not doing his Kanye best. <laughs> that wasn't very Kanye best of you. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like there's nothing up there anymore, man. It's I feel bad. Big- I, I feel bad. I, I I although I don't, I don't think I've loved someone that's had like a genuine terrible thing that's happened because I know like a lot of people have, but I don't I don't think that's happened to me. I know a lot of people like. Loved, uh, I don't remember the band, but like a completely horrible thing happened about that band, like within the last like 15 years, and like now you can't listen to that anymore. But, um, what oh my god, I can't remember, so I don't want to say, but it was really bad, like it was like child porn stuff. I, but I can't remember the band, so I don't want to start speculating band names. But the lead <laughs> singer, terrible. no, I'm kidding, it's not guy, <laughs> god, I oh my god, if Paramore, but uh, yeah, now, now everyone has to listen to Kanye West I, under I the. Know. Now you have to listen to Kanye West in a fucking bunker. <laughs> Make sure no one hears you. I, I literally made it or I made a tweet this morning after I saw the video, but I made this thought last night where I was like, you know what? It's probably a good time to like rank all the Kanye albums since there's never going to be another one coming out. <laughs> like the, if, even if he makes more music, we're not going to care. So you could just rank them all now. Um, <laughs> and then all this shit happens. I'm like, oh, it'll never be a good time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he would have to like pass away. Which is a terrible yeah. thing to say. Like I, I don't wish death on him. I'm just saying, like he would have to go, and and you'd have to be like, all right, he said crazy shit, but yes. you know, like this happened. But also, like he's dead to me now. Like <laughs> no, I mean, I feel no, I feel you. I get I get that general. There's a lot of people that I'm like, it doesn't matter what happens. I you are, it's over. You know, so I get it. Tr- trust me. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's a weird thing, but hey. Well, I'll figure all that shit out later after I, I go to work, which I'm realizing what time it is. But we can we can continue until the end. Oh, 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 oh! I apologize. No, let's get let's get you out of here. I was gonna just talk some more okay. shit, but we should we should let you leave. I apologize for that. I wasn't paying attention to time. Achievers, 
that's it. That's an episode. Thank you so much for joining us. This was incredibly fun. I always know when I have me and Emmett on, it's it's going to be a great show. Thank you so much for joining me, my man. Please, one more time, uh, plug everything. Uh, yeah, well, I've been here a couple times. Y'all should know where I'm at. Yeah, right you now. know, they know, but uh, a Spoonful, Video Games Utopia. Yeah, all, uh, all the stuff you said. Uh, the main place to find me, EJ Spun 61 on yes. Twitter. That's where you can find me. Again, Until that time, great off. Twitter following. Why, why don't you have more followers? I don't understand. All right, there's a lot of people, terrible, terrible tweets. They get more followers. I don't understand. You, 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 people got to find you. Know. you. Yeah, every now and then I'll I'll get a good tweet, but um, yeah, follow me on there. Also on Hive, because Hive is pretty cool actually. I like that little little app. We'll see how that goes. I feel like if um, Twitter ever goes away, I'm just gone. You know, I don't use anything else, and I barely use Twitter. So like, I feel like if it's gone, I'm just I am gone. Maybe I go to Reddit, but like I don't use Reddit yeah. like that. I don't like I don't like talk to people. So. Reddit's great for like. Like, if you went to Twitter and only looked at the trending topics and then just, like, went into them and replied to one of those tweets, that's what Reddit is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, like, Reddit has its good uses. And it all does. These, all these little alternatives have good uses, but Hive I, is what I'm liking right now. I, I literally will search something and put Reddit behind it because, like, that's how I know I'll get something concisely. I know someone's asked this question before, so I can just go and see what they've said. And I've gotten into that habit. It's almost like how I used to YouTube everything. Like, oh, you die. Okay, I'll YouTube it. Now I just do that, read it, and I can read, like, like what happened. Um, exactly, exactly. Plus, you know, I, I have several friends who only use Twitter for explicit purposes. People do that with Reddit, too. So it, it might be a perfect replacement. <laughs> wink. Exactly. Uh, um, but yeah, for the actual stuff that I do, of course, Spoonful Vids, that is the Twitter for the Spoonful podcast. I do a Mario Pacquiao uh, variety show. We do a lot of stuff on there. L latest episode, we talked about the World Cup, his proposal, and me not liking Bayonetta 3 that much. <laughs> and uh, also, Welcome to the Thing is another thing I do uh, with T.L. Foster and Jared Green. Uh, you can find that by going to the Welcome to the Pool House podcast feed which is another show that TL also does. Uh, very proud of that show, so go ahead and listen to that. We might. We're working on doing some pack stuff there. Uh, oh, that's cool. Show, but that will require, because if I do end up going to PAX next year, next year for this, literally the next weekend is WrestleMania, and I've already agreed to go to WrestleMania. Oh. So, and that's in LA, and PAX is Boston, and I am in Georgia, so we're about to figure a lot of shit out soon. That sounds cool as F, dude. Oh, my God. Fuck oh, yeah, it, dude. it's gonna be awesome, but I gotta get time off of work and I gotta make sure I have money. Cause last time I left, the t last time I left this town, I did not have enough money to do all that. <laughs> no, yeah, I feel that it, that happened to me before too. I was like, oof, I didn't have that money <laughs> that I thought I did. <laughs> like when I went to Kind of Funny Prom, I didn't even have a credit card. So, <laughs> oh, I love that. It's flying by the oh, seat of your pants. Yeah, I'll I'll tell you that quick story after we're done recording. But yeah, you can find all that stuff there. And of course, VG.TV. I just put out our anniversary episode of the Players Club podcast, which is a show I do. Um, it is the episode where we get all the core people from VGU.TV, all the That's awesome. main people that are on there. And we played a little bit of Messy Mashup, which is a cool little game that I stole from Blessing Jr. So uh, listen to that one. It's a really good one, and I'm very proud of that. One episode. day I'm going to just plow through and just be on a show with you. Cause you always do stuff. You always do stuff with me. I feel bad. I need to. I need to help you out in some way. At some point, I'm probably gonna actually. Right after this, I might get you on for a, a coming up episode. We'll see. <laughs> get excited, everyone! Thank you so much for listening to this Easy Trivia's Game Podcast. Remember, every single Friday, we come to you with everything you need to know. Remember, spoil, spoil the cast up. God of War. Expect more from Callisto Protocol in the coming weeks as well. Until the next time, go Chief. <laughs>